Today, former U.S. President George W. Bush will be joined by other high-profile dignitaries on the 20th anniversary of the launch of PEPFAR. The president's emergency plan for AIDS relief was set up to help in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Global AIDS coordinator and director of Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. John Gengasong, says this program has helped many countries. SABC News international correspondent Sophie Mugwena spoke to Dr. I think we have to, Sophie, uh, work aggressively, boldly, to bring HIV AIDS to an end by the year 2030 as a public health threat. Let me just be very clear. It is not to say we will not see, see HIV around, but we will bring it to a level that we can begin to integrate that into other uh, primary health care services. Where are we now? If you see where we're coming from 20 years ago when PEPFAR just started and you see where we are today, uh, you recognize that it is very possible, very possible that if we are fight aggressively and join forces, we can make good progress towards 2030. Today, PEPFAR has saved 25 million lives, prevented 5.5 million children born free of HIV AIDS, mostly in Africa. PEPFAR has invested $110 billion, 95% of that is in Africa. And PEPFAR continues to invest every year to supporting countries in Africa, about 30 countries in Africa to fight that fight. What is it that needs to be done on the continent in improving the healthcare system? I think there are essentially uh, four key things that I would encourage the continent to invest on their own national public health institutions, mm -hmm. the equivalent of the NICD, the National Institute of Communicable Diseases. You want to see that all across the continent. Second, you want to promote manufacturing, but in a coordinated fashion, like vaccine manufacturing, diagnostics, and pharmaceutical across the continent. Those are security investments. They are like your insurance scheme. You don't want an insurance when you are sick, you want to have an insurance before you are sick. There's a saying that you dig your words before you are thirsty. You don't go to find water when, and when you are thirsty. You have to develop the workforce. In Africa, you need about 6,000 epidemiologists. That is disease detectives. You only have about 1,800. So there's a gap there of close to 4,000 that needs to be filled. We have to look at uh, surveillance systems, laboratory systems, and strengthen them as a network. Like in SADC, you want to see, make sure that all SADC countries are talking to each other yeah. through a network so that when a disease occurs somewhere, you can easily communicate and, and squash it very, very quickly. Your message to the young people in sub-Sahara in particular, because this is the region that has got a huge challenge, and you pointed out with the uh, population being so young and they are so vulnerable. So... This is a direct message to the young people that HIV AIDS is not over. HIV AIDS is not over. Do not be deceived. You all didn't see HIV AIDS. We saw HIV AIDS. It's an ugly disease. So that is one. Just to back that up with numbers, last year 650,000 people died of HIV AIDS in the world. Of that, 425,000 were in Africa. Were in Africa. If you put that in context, over the last three years, about 260,000 people died of COVID in Africa in three years. But in one year alone, HIV AIDS killed 425,000 people on the continent of Africa. 60% of new infections are still happening in Africa. So HIV AIDS is not all that. My uh, advice to the young people and truly encouragement and plea to the young people is that you take prevention seriously. Uh, uh, you, you make sure you know your status, and if you are in infected, you go get your treatment. This treatment works. It's just one tablet a day. There should be no reason for stigmatization, no reason for discrimination against HIV AIDS or people who are infected with HIV AIDS on the continent. And finally, to the leaders on the continent. Can we continue to work together and raise political awareness? Can we continue to work together and synergize domestic funding so that it matches donors' funding. Can we continue to work together for programmatic support so that we bring HIV AIDS to an end by the year 2030? 
very pleased with the outcome. They committed to that. If you look at the declarations and statements that were issued on page 66, you see that they committed that this year they will be hosting a special summit on HIV AIDS in Africa. That is remarkable. That is true leadership, and that's what we should be working on. Putting an eyes on 2030 and saying, yes, we can get there, and we will get there.